Hi, I'm Filippo Voltaggio with Life Changes, and I'm here at the U.S. Mastery Conference put on by The Reconnection. And I have the distinct pleasure of being here interviewing <laughs> Bruce Lipton today. Now, Bruce Lipton is a biologist. He's so much, actually. And I just have to tell you real quickly, three years ago, my brother Peter gifted me a DVD on Christmas, and he said, you can't watch it until we watch it together. So we waited until the kids went to bed, and then we watched it. It was a view doing a lecture about all this amazing things that you found and we stayed up and watched it till the very end and then watched it again and then discussed it until we were just so tired you have started such a conversation with what you have found and i think one of the best things about your finding this is that you weren't looking for it to begin with no no absolutely not it always surprises me because uh i got into the sciences to get away from the concept of spirituality when I was young, spiritual people gave me advice. And even as a kid, you could look go and say, you know, their words never really match their life. So there was some point like spiritual advice started to wane as being meaningful. Mm. And then at some point it's like, ah, science, I want science. And uh, so it was interesting to go into the science and then uh, and, and, and run away from spirituality and at some point run straight head on into it in such a way that it was like, oh my God, I don't believe in it, but it, I don't have any choice, but I must believe in it mm. now, yeah. And what you were doing is you were looking at cells. People actually do this. And Bruce was looking at them. But yeah. What you did that some people don't do when they look at them is you listened or you watched or you heard something? I, I, I was, um, uh, first time I looked at a microscope, seven years old. And, uh, and I saw, the, the first time I saw an amoeba and a paramecium moving around, I was like, Oh my God, you know, <laughs> and then, and, and then, you know, being a little kid and then finding things that are smaller than you, that's always good. You know, it's like, oh, look, we're, so, I'm a giant. They're little tiny things mm -hmm. like that. But looking into their world and, and I, ha I was fascinated from the very beginning because I, in my child's mind, I saw that they're, they're not like pinballs bouncing around a the machine. They were, you know, looking for things, moving around. They had intention and purpose. So I saw them as little people. Mm. And then, uh, and that was in seventh grade. And by the time, I was teaching medical school, I already knew they were little people and, and uh, had a nice um, experience, a relationship. <laughs> they taught me so much. Mm. They taught me a lot. They, they, they developed what? A personality? What, what happened to them that made you say, Wait, this is something that I have to tell the world? Well, what I saw was is that uh, while teaching in medical school that genes control life, a belief called genetic determinism, that uh, uh, the, the, our traits are determined by our genes and we didn't pick the genes and you can't change the genes and um, teaching people that they're victims, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, hey, look, you got that running in your family. I'm, I'm sorry, there's nothing you can do about right. it. It's a machine. Uh, then to be so caught up in the world of the cells to find a story that was so completely different than what I was teaching blew my mind because mm. it turned out that my research, which is on stem cells, uh, and that was back in 1967, so a lot of people think stem cells are something relatively new. I mean, mm. back, I was working on them 43 years ago, mm. and what was really interesting was just a handful of us in the whole world that were working on stem cells, but what they told me was so profound that shortly afterwards, after publishing my work, I walked out of the university because it was like, I knew I was teaching the wrong information and mm. I just couldn't do it anymore. Yeah, actually some of, some of what they told you, I love and I hate at the same time. Ah, because, which, well, the fact that you're either on or you're off. You're either positive or you're negative. There's no gray, there's no in between. Well, that, no, it was growth and protection. You know, I, I can say, I don't know how happy you might be in growth or unhappy in protection, but uh, at least growth and protection was a mutually exclusive way of living at that moment. You can't do both of them. Okay, so, so we could, the, the gray I'm looking for is like, we say, I'm a positive person. I, yeah. I, I believe I could cure this or something like yeah. that. But then, then you go back into the, the dark side and say, ah. Yeah, that's unfortunately, that's everybody's uh, affliction. We all have to carry that because there, there is this other dark side. And it's not, there was nothing innately dark. It was information that was passed on for generations and generations. Uh, it, it affects our subconscious mind. And I just really want to clear that up because a lot of people think, oh, the subconscious mind is a scary, scary place. And I go, subconscious mind is as cold and sterile as a tape player. It has no good or has no bad. It just depends on what you're recording with it, you see. So mm -hmm. basically to blame the subconscious mind for the problems is really miss, missing the point. It's 
the learning that the subconscious mind downloaded is where the problem comes from. Right. And so not only do we have this um, great example of positive and, and negative, it, it's being, a, you, could, you could extrapolate into all aspects of our life. Yeah, it's, it, it changes us from that whole story of, hey, what a coincidence, I'm here on planet Earth. Right. What a, you know, that was just a genetic accident or something like that. Uh, the new science reveals w we really have a powerful role on this planet. And, and that uh, failure to understand that powerful role is what is causing the crisis the whole planet is facing right now right. is because we, we miss what the, the Native American Indians said. It's like we were here to tend the garden. Mm -hmm. Destroying the garden uh, has been problematic because we were created from the garden. And as we destroy the garden, then we have destroying the whole foundation for our own existence. So science has already revealed we're going extinct. Mm -hmm. And it's due to our behavior. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's another thing I learned from watching you over and over again is, is that we already have the capacity to do all these wonderful things and all these what we consider horrible things. Cancer, for example. The cell has it within it. We just decide whether we're going to get it, right? Well, we're the ones that... Uh, it's not that we decide we're going to get it. We're the ones that have not been informed that our life and the way we live it is controlling our biology, our genes, and our destiny. Uh, because we've been programmed with a complete reverse of that. It's like, oh no, all this is out of your control and mm. your, your life was already predetermined at the moment of conception when all those genes got in there. And it's like, that's the old story and that's the story of irresponsibility. Mm. Because it says, look, oh, hey, I'm sorry your life is gonna be that way. You got cancer running in it. And then you go, geez, I can't do anything about it. I go, no. And then you go, oh, well then I don't really care anymore. And, and when people let go of caring, mm. it's all downhill from there. So when we're answering those questions at the doctor, like, do you have this in your history? Do you have this in your history? We could almost say we don't answer that because it doesn't really have to matter. It doesn't when we know the new biology because uh, uh, only your belief in history matters. Mm. And if you change your belief, then history is irrelevant. So it doesn't and, matter if you're checking it off. It's what you believe. Absolutely, because uh, uh, it's called the, the, the placebo effect when you talk about believing something that makes you well. Mm. And yet their equal and opposite belief system is called the nocebo effect. It says a negative belief is just as powerful as a positive belief but goes in the opposite direction. Basically, it says is that uh, if you believe that you're going to have a disease, if you really believe that, then you can manifest a disease with no organic reason for having it other than the belief. So it's like as much as belief can heal you, the negative belief called the nocebo effect can actually kill you. Uh, and it says maybe we start listening to our beliefs and our mind it's because uh, if we review this, maybe we would change some of the programming. Mm. Well, you know, I watched that video over and over again, believing that someday I would meet you and ask you these questions. I'd like to ask him this, I'd like to ask him this, and here we are. Ask me those questions, <laughs> I'm ready, let's do it. We'll have to do it another time, we've run out of time. Bruce oh, I'm so sorry to hear that, it's thank you so much, thank you.